What's going on? We're back for another amazing episode of the Innovator Hour, man. And I got a very special guest in the building, man. I got Neff the Pharaoh. What's poppin', bruh? What's happening, boy? How you doing? Shit, I'm good. I'm chilling. Loving this LA weather. Man, t- t- today I'm it sucks that it was raining today. I mean, it was raining like last night to me. Like, wait, I got out of the studio at like six o'clock. Oh, it was morning. it was raining hella much last yeah. night. Yeah. But I want to say, first off, it's a pleasure and a blessing to have you here, bro. I appreciate you coming through today, for man, real. we supposed to do this. It's long overdue, man. So Hell we yeah. already know we got to get this shit done. No, off tops. I want to ask you, why did you choose the name Neff the Pharaoh? Man, you know, uh, us black people, as, as a culture, as a people, you know, we was kings and queens once upon a time, and our royalty was all stolen from us. Our history was you know, re- or rewritten, and they told us a bunch of lies. So, you know, in, in high school, when we start touching a little, we we start touching bases on, um, like, the, the ancient Egyptians and shits like that. They didn't really crack it open all the way like yeah. they were supposed to, you, you know? Yeah. But just that subject alone, it was very intriguing to me. So, like, on my extracurricular you know, nigga, like on my on my extra time, you know, I would always hit the libraries and 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 try to do just my little extra research on on, on that shit, and it just became something that like I just fell in love with the lifestyle and and how we was royalty. So you know, yeah. I just took it, ran with it, like Neff the Pharaoh, yeah. and then really, um, when I was doing my name. And like Neff the Pharaoh, I was really like a big Tyler the Creator fan. Really yeah. keep it so solid. Me and yeah. my cousin Pookie, we was on Tyler the Creator hella hard. So, you know how it's Tyler the Creator, that's where I got like Neff the Pharaoh from. Yeah. That's where I even got that whole little, you know what I mean? So that's why I got the Nah, it's tight. It's tight that you sure. um that you draw from that because you right though. I'm I remember like going when I go back to like what they was teaching, they they teach you it, but they just kinda Give yeah, you a basis to make it's like it's like Black History Month when you only get yeah. one month. Like, come on, the my fucking, nigga, we, we got a we lifetime. Got so much shit to <laughs> shove in one month. No nah, tops. Um, I want to ask you, when did you start making music? Um, I started making music at four years old. Really? Yeah, I knew at four years old what exactly I wanted to be. I didn't want to be a race car driver. I didn't want to be a policeman, a fireman. I didn't want to. Be a dog catcher, yeah. none of that shit. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to be in this music, so yeah. I I just like stuck to my dreams. You just stay consistent, you know, like a football star, how a basketball star, how they keep on practicing to, to perfect their craft. Yeah. You know, that's what I did. Yeah. Do you remember the first song you ever made? I remember the first rap I ever made. Yeah. You still remember it? Uh huh. You you would spit it for me? Yep. It was I was three years away. I was four years old. It's like. My name is Lil T, Lil T, my name is Lil T, and I'm not three, I'm four, and I got the keys to the door. I'm in preschool, and I'm finna get some more. It was like that. I was just like, <laughs> That's tight. Young four-year-old. My son just wrote a rap that was so really? hard. His, and the way he wrote his shit was way complex. I'm yeah. like, man, this nigga, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's saying some shit in there. I rapped it to my partner the other day. He's like, bro, you, did you ghostwrite that? I'm like, nah, we don't, That's ghost, him. We don't ghostwrite shit. nothing, man. We got young star in the making. Yeah. All times. Uh, what was it that made you want to start making music? Uh, just being a, from the area I was from. You know, I'm from an urban area. Uh, I got uncles. You know, I got aunties. That's 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 in the, the black market uh, type of business. You know, um, I, it's different. It was different. It was many different avenues, you know. And growing up in the um, urban areas, you, you could be a football star. You could fucking sell drugs. You could anything you could yeah. do to get some money. You you know, a nigga is gonna find a way out to get some money. But I also found out that I could do something that I love so much and get paid off of this shit. And yeah. you could finesse and sell it like drugs. Yeah, all times. This is definitely. For me, like, yeah. what the fuck? I will <laughs> finesse your ass yeah. for real. So it's just like this music. Like my nigga, we was we was having a conversation the other day. He was explaining like, I'm like, man, you damn near woke me up even more onto this shit. It's like, man, he explained like, man, the music and the street shit come hand in hand. You know, it's yeah. like that shit is like 
Yeah. Tit, tit for tat. So On top. Salt and pepper. So, nigga. Nigga, if a nigga wasn't gonna play football, man, I was gonna rap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, it sound it sound fucked up. That's like, but it's, it's a stereotype, but yeah. shit. Nigga, I'm you going with it. You better. All times. Did you, I don't what you, you better work with what you got, nigga. Did you play sports growing up? Football. You know, Vallejo niggas be playing basketball, I mean, uh, baseball and all of that shit, but yeah. I sucked at baseball. I was actually raw in football until I got injured, though, so yeah. playing B. See, I, I played college ball and shit, but I don't know. I just kind of got over it after a while. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have been a nigga that went to the NFL. I probably would have went to jail or some shit. You start realizing, like, them NFL dreams is getting is getting cut real thin because it's like most niggas don't really do that. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, man, you niggas need to start waking <laughs> it up. Like, man, what the fuck? Am I really finna get here, cuz? Like, yeah. nigga, this nigga's raw ass. Fuck. Yeah. I know, like, you know, I feel like that as a rapper. Like, nigga, nigga, if you half ass doing it, move out the way. Cause you yeah. know, it's niggas like me and, and L O E Gino. It's niggas like me and Shooter Gang Coney that's gonna come up and eat your ass if you ain't no homo. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna come up, we gonna just come up and, you know what I mean? We gonna fuck some shit up. If you, if you not really, if you, if you bullshitting, nigga, get out the way. Yeah. You know, that's like a football player. That's like a basketball player trying to play football, and yeah. you half ass doing it, you going to get hit real off hard. Tops. Off tops. I want to ask you, what artists did you grow up listening to? Um, I have to say, Mac Dre. Of course. Juvenile. Uh, DMX. Busta Rhymes. Yeah. Um, Michael Jackson. He, yeah. he ain't even a rapper. I like Elton John too. He hard. Yeah. Um. Man, it's a lot of people like that that really inspired a pharaoh. It's yeah. just not rap. Like yeah. I listen to so much different shit. Like you would think, oh, man, what is wrong with this nigga? Yeah. <laughs> Never get the ox cord. Just some shit that's gonna come on. Like, bro, I don't. What the fuck did this come? You like, nigga. Did this song come on an iPhone? <laughs> like, was these iTunes songs that already preloaded on the phone and shit? Like, yeah. I listen to a lot of different shit, so I get inspirations from every different, you know, genre avenue. And shit. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. different genre of music. That's lit. Um, I want to ask you, what? how big was it for you to sign with Sick With It Records with E-40? That's like... Nigga, that's like being Marshawn Lynch, being from the town. Playing for the Raiders. Playing for the Raiders. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. You know, this nigga really from Vallejo. He really from, like, south side of Vallejo, you know, the hillside area. Yeah. Damn near from the same street, but yeah. he just from the hillside part. Yeah. You know, so it's just like shit tight. It was like, nigga, this dope-ass recruitment. You yeah, know, yeah. somebody was paying attention. <laughs> you feel no, me? So. Times. Shout out to 40 Water. I want to ask you, though, how has being signed to 40 helped you outside of, like, releasing music just from advice and connections, kind of like being, like, a, a mentor and a big brother Man. to you? Uh, being signed to 40 is, like, it's, it's a, uh, the rapper's guide to free game and longevity, yeah. you know, and with E-40 giving me a buzz, my brother g Easy has took in. A, a lot of attention to me, you know. So yeah. after he forty, you know, sign a nigga, put that stamp on me. G Easy, that's the nigga that ever took me. He uh, he took me on my first tour. Yeah. He took me on the road. Like nigga was damn near on the road three months. Three months damn near turning two years out of my life. So yeah. like, shout out E forty for signing me and 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 like giving me that platform. But G Easy, yeah, that's the nigga that took Neff on the road. That's the nigga that's gone. You know, gonna go hard for Neff. Like I started out as an opener on that tour. Yeah. By the end of the fucking tour, I was the second nigga that come on. Like it went me, G Easy. Like you know, yeah. so nigga worked his way up. So I'm forever. I'm That's forever nice. in debt with that nigga Gerald. I'm forever. I love that nigga Gerald. G Easy goes so fucking hard. Yeah. E Forty is my sensei. He giving he giving nigga a game and shit. But really, when I'm out in that field, yeah. that white boy, yeah. Yeah, on my mama, I fuck with him. That's lit. That's yeah. lit. Shout out to G Easy for real, then. Shout out to G Easy for sure. I want to ask you, 
we talked about you having a son. How hard is it for you when you're touring and doing shows and you got to leave them back behind? Man, you, uh, that's probably one of the hardest things. You know, nigga ain't really with none of that soft shit. Yeah. Like, but that'd probably be the number one thing that's on my head while I'm on that bus. Like, damn, I miss my little nigga. But FaceTime is, is, is very, yeah, very, very good, for sure. Uh, very, it comes in handy. Like, you know, nigga be on the road getting homesick. Call his son real quick, talk to my son, have a conversation. I, you know, I always talk to my son like a man ever since he was born. I don't yeah. do none of that goo goo gaga shit. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, I talk to, it's my kid. Yeah. I get on the phone, what's up, little nigga? Yeah. How you being? Like, what's up, dad? <laughs> like, you know, I'm just chilling with my mom. Like, man, don't be giving her a hard time, you know. Treat her like a queen, you know. I don't want to be getting no phone calls saying you being bad. Shit like that. Yeah. And I just like cherish those moments. Then I get off the phone. I go back to right with my family right here. Them yeah. niggas that you see behind me, like that's why I keep them with me. Like, you know, them is really true. Niggas be like, Oh, they're my brothers or day ones. Now nah, these niggas is really like my day ones, my brothers, like nigga, I really get in trouble. We we can't snitch on each other. Yeah. Nigga, use a bitch <laughs> if you tell, you know, yeah. like that type of shit. Niggas really got in trouble. Like yeah. Niggas be so f quick to be brother, brother, and friendly. That's a lot of, that's the number one reason why a lot of this new rap shit, this new rap funk come about. It's because you bitch ass niggas is out here trying to be each other brothers and shit. Yeah. Out here weird. Nigga, you niggas better stick to that rap shit. We, this is a job, right? Yeah. Nigga, them is y'all, these is co workers. Nigga, stick yeah. to that. All you niggas trying to hang out, brother, brother, all of that shit, man, and just being. Over friendly, that's how niggas start getting snitched on. Yeah, that's how niggas' yeah. operations start getting fucked up. Niggas start fucking with weird ass bitch niggas who had a hidden ass agenda that yeah. you ain't even know about. Now you look like a weird ass square. Cause you, with Cause them. you was going hard <laughs> for the nigga. Niggas tried to warn you. You you just want to be a bull. Like nah, you can't tell me nothing about my nigga. And you don't know this man. Yeah, you don't nah, know that's that some real shit so, though. For real. That's why I really keep them niggas around me. I'm not. I'm not that one who be too friendly. Yeah. I fuck with niggas like Pauls. You know, I um you know, I, I shake a shake your hand, I fuck with you, you know. Even if my partner, you know, we gon' if I see you in a club, we might pop a few bottles together, but I'm not I'm not the type of nigga that's finna be tap trying to tap in with a nigga every day unless we we really had genuine shit, you know. If yeah. I really don't see the genuine Man in the, in the nigga eyes, like when we having conversations or or when we doing whatever we doing in our in our field of work, you yeah. know, I would just treat you like a coworker, nigga. Yeah, that don't mean nothing to me, nigga. No, not my partner. Yeah, I gotta talk to you at the end of this shit. You know, these is niggas I really gotta go home with. Yeah, these is niggas I really gotta put the gloves on with. If we got a disagreement, we got a box, nigga. Yeah. Other niggas on the street, I don't love you. We not yeah. boxing. All times. Nah, that's some real shit. Nah, I completely agree with that 100%, bro. I want to ask you, what is your process like for selecting beats and working on lyrics for your songs? Oh, that's a very dope-ass process to go through with Chang Chang. We be in the studio. We have good vibes. We just come in, probably roll up a big-ass backwood. Yeah. Um, My new album coming out is called Mushrooms and Coloring Books. I've been on shrooms for the whole album. Yeah. So I might choose some shrooms, get my mood, uh, drink some water, had a producer pull up some motherfucking beats and just, you know, close my eyes and vibe smoking on some exotics. And uh, the beats really talk to me. You yeah. know, I don't pick the beat, the beat pick me. Yeah. And it don't matter what the fuck it sound like. It don't matter what tempo the beat is. I If I have my, old, my, if I have my eyes closed and that beat make me open my eyes, load it up. Yeah. That's, that's how I that's how I work, <laughs> and then how I work is I freestyle. I don't write nothing, you know, because I got dyslexia and I, nigga, I think my thought process is so fucking fast, man. I be like, you know, how uh, adults be like, think before you talk. Yeah. Like, man, I be thinking before I talk. Like, so I already know what the fuck I be wanting to say. Like three sentences in, so yeah. it's like if I write something down, it'll look chicken scratch. It'll all get. Fucked up due to, due to me having dyslexia, so I yeah. learned how to, you know, manipulate that little hack, yeah. a little life hack in my life. You know, just yeah. freestyle. I started. I got a good ass memory, like a motherfucker. You yeah. know, so I start freestyling, and then me and Peasy, we got this little. I'll call it Neff and Peasy rule. Like, man, anything you after you pick that beat, 
and you just fall in love with it. Anything that comes to your head, first thing, say it. Yeah. Why not? These yeah. other niggas saying any other thing. For like, sure. <laughs> niggas is 17, 18 years old talking about popping Cialis and shit. Yeah. Like, come on, What's bro. going on? <laughs> Stop that shit. You don't need that, bro. No, nah, Tops. So let's talk about the new project, man. What can the people expect from me on this project? Very groovy vibes, man. It's very, very Bay Area. You know, I'm I'm still one of the last Mohicans. You know, I feel like as the Bay, you know, we need to stop all that dick riding, bro. Pause. Like, yeah. Niggas, we, like, we allow other vibes. We allow other trends to to get in our water and pollute it, and then we accept it, and then we forget that. Like, we ground zero. It's like just a mecca. Yeah, that's nigga. where they sound from. What the fuck? We the Bay Area. We created, <laughs> we created this shit. Like, yeah. shout out to Snoop Dogg with the for shizzle and Izzle, how you took it and put it on another level. But yeah. niggas don't even know. Like, that's the Bay Area. We made that shit. Of course, like, of course. A lot of this shit comes from the Bay Area, so... That's what you're going to hear on my album, Bay Area Vibes, but it's like a give you that worldwide feeling, and it's still Neff the Pharaoh. So yeah. that's what you're going to get with this Mushrooms and Color Books. If you never even took Mushrooms, it's going to be like, man, if this how you feel? Like, this yeah. shit, it's a dope-ass experience. You know, I say, I always, always say my albums are experiences. Yeah. You know, I, I want to put my, my fans in a simulation. You put them earphones on, you press play, close your eyes, you like, you like in a simulated... You know what I mean? Yeah. In, a, in a simulated universe, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, this shit, it's, it's, it's tight. It's all different types of feels. It's real good music. It's big records on there. This nigga talented. He really raw. He could really rap. So he not yeah. just mumbling yeah. and saying any fucking thing. He really saying some shit. So that's what you can expect on the on the mushrooms and coloring books from Neff to Fero. And we got dope-ass artwork. It's just a whole dope-ass project, man. Yeah. When it, when is it gonna drop? Um, right now we waiting on, we we uh we shooting all the videos and shit. Cause you know you want to have ammunition. Yeah. As a rapper and shit, they don't tell you like, nigga, you want to have ammunition. You don't want to shoot your videos after the shit. You want to shoot your videos and your singles and shit before. So when you pick a date, which is we gonna get together as a team, kill F and be sick with it, my niggas. SSG, you already know. O and B, shout out my niggas. We gonna get together as a team, um, and look at dates that are available and best for us, and try to pick that best by that best date. Yeah. Drop the album on that, and then once we got that date, that's when you start that campaign. Like, yeah. Nigga, I say a nigga need a good thirty days for a campaign. Nigga, yeah. you need a good month, two months, three months. I'm a nigga. We pick when we pick the motherfucking date. As soon as we pick the date for the album, that's when you gonna see me go up. Like you gonna yeah. be like, oh, all right, okay, I see what Neff's on. Yeah. Like he's on straight album mode. That's all this niggas talking about. Like straight up. So whenever we pick that date for the album, I'ma just get on that mini gun and start. Yeah, <laughs> I got hella shit. Yeah. So look out, mushrooms and color and books, man. Where did you record it at? The Bay Area, Atlanta, um, New York. Um, it's songs yeah, all that over. niggas got that was recorded in London. It's like, it's just a dope-ass project because I can listen to it as an artist and be like, oh, yeah, I remember when I was at Woo Woo Lab or I remember I was here at this point in time. Or, yeah. Man, I remember I was high as this yeah. at this point in time. And it's not like, and I like, at, I'm not even like this Album for me is like a more natural high because you know mushrooms just come for the earth. I was on straight weed and and mushrooms. I wasn't the Percocet baby, the, yeah. the syrup baby, you know, the opiate baby on this one. But I mean, it's still content when you rap about that because this is it's it's what's going on in the world today. I'm not finna just not rap about what's going on around us. You would be a dumbass nigga. It's like how you not informing. What's going on? I always feel like rappers are like a god. They are a god to motherfuckers who had who went in a coma or some shit. Yeah, nigga, if you've been missing for years, nigga, you can come back and you're supposed to be able to pick up a rap artist and then learn what's going on. You're supposed to learn yeah, what's yeah. going on with the times right now. So I'm that's tough. just a type of nigga I am. You know, I'm gonna keep you current. 
I'm gonna talk about the current events. Remember in high school when niggas used to have to do current events? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always make sure I keep a current event. That dumbass little thing in high school sticks sticks with me in my raps. Yeah. And then I always make sure I have to keep a current event. Say some little slick ass shit that's current to just remain relevant. You know, fucking kids' attention spans today suck. Yeah. No, I'm top shit. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Niggas, niggas got five second attention span, <laughs> nigga. Even then, like, and you had, you had me. I'm not fit to be doing all of this weird shit, bro. I'm grown, nigga. I got a kid. I come home, that nigga gonna be like, Dad, you look weird. Yeah. So it's just, I just gotta find different ways to stay relevant for Neff. And you know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a bait nigga. So it's easy to me. Yeah. Nigga just gotta learn how to finesse the game and just. Niggas and stay yourself. Don't never lose how to, who the fuck you is. They gonna yeah. love, gonna love whatever the fuck you doing if it's genuine, for real, for real. Yeah, off tops. Now I, I completely agree with that. And to touch back on what you said about like uh, the campaign, that's something that I like. I've been interviewing a lot of artists. That's something that I really have picked up on about niggas. When you got a project coming, you gotta shoot four videos before the shit drop just to have the content and be ready to do it because it's all about uh. The consistency and also about the just being prepared. You feel me? So that it's sure. big that you say that. Um, I want to ask you: Can you tell me about um, who you had produced some of the beats on the project? Any features? Man, can you let me know anything. I got producing on there. I got DTB. That's producing. my boy. <laughs> That's my nigga. Yeah, yeah. He told me for sure. <laughs> uh, got Shooter Gang Coney on that album. Okay. My brother. That's my boy. Um, I got Loe Gino. Yeah. My brother on the Berkeley album, he, he up, you know, he out of Berkeley, <laughs> you understand, Kill F&B, L-O-E, um, L-O-E, Kill F&B, however you want to say it. Uh, got my nigga Sada Baby on there. Okay. Man, um, I can't even think of, like, right now, uh, producers and shit, because I've been working on so much new shit right now. Like, the track list of my album is in my head. I see it right now, but yeah. it's just like... I made, I, last night I just recorded like five new songs. So really? you already know what type of hype I'm on. Like, yeah, so it's kind of yeah. hard. I have to see this shit physically in front of me. Like, oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah I got whoop, 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 whoop on there. Because <laughs> nigga, I'm in the studio 24-7. I'm in the studio. Right after I leave you, I'm finna go get something to eat. And I'm in the booth, nigga. I'm not playing. Like, yeah, on the grind. I, I keep some fire up under my ass. Pause. Like... You know, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know what I mean? You gotta, yeah, yeah, you just gotta kiss, keep your motherfucking foot on the goddamn gas. No, like I got, uh, oh, I got uh, Apollo. You know, yeah. that's like that's I think it's Kaylani's little cousin, a little brother. Yeah. Um, I got uh, Tiger on the album. Yeah. I got Slimmy B from Sob. Yeah. Um, I got my blood brother. This is really my real life brother. The Dark Lord, Scandal the Dark Lord. He got a feature on there. Yeah. I got uh Rex Life Raj. Man, that that record. Berkeley High. Berkeley High got some record, music. Got some artists. Bro, that record with Raj is gonna go retarded. It's like on some real conscious shit. It's called Still Raj. Yeah. Um, I got my brother Dusty, all black on that motherfucker. Oh, that's my nigga too. You understand me? <laughs> um and on that, on that track. Who actually produced it is uh it's a producer who who got to work on the Yeezy album. Yeah. Or the Yeezus album. So yeah. that 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 right there alone, I was a blessing to have that nigga fly all the way from France just to come fuck with me and all black. Yeah. That's he was big. a fan. Yeah. So that shit was dope. Um I got a lot of dope ass shit on here. Like I got a song called Purple Cups that's gonna be raw. It's like some some two thousand Groovy music, you know what I'm saying? I got that old school rump shaking, twerking shit. Yeah. I got a track called TYP that's gonna have the bitches turned up. Yeah. Me and Tiger track is dope. It's called High Voltage. It's on like, like Lil Wayne, Dick Pleaser 2019. Really? Like, yeah, <laughs> this shit go crazy, man. Me and Slimmy B got a song where we going back to back. Is that motherfucker called Lethal Weapon? So that it, it, it shit, it's just gonna be a raw ass project, man. Hell yeah. Be a dope project all together. I'm sure, like me and everybody else, we waiting and we uh, excited for the project to drop. Um, I want to ask you, with the Kill FMB label, um, what does it stand for and what artists do you have on it? Keep it lit for my brothers. That's, that's what Kill that's FMB it. stand for. And and with this family, I, I cherish the people. I'm I don't even. 
considered her as an artist. Like, I don't consider him an artist. That's Pookie job, yeah. you know. Um, these is my brothers, you know. I would I would say really this uh, Raymond McMahon, L.O.E. Gino, uh, and then, like, say with associations, I associate Coney with us, Shooter Gang Coney. Um, yeah. OMB Peasy, um, L.O.E. Gino. He's, bro, Gino is fucking wrong. You know Gino. Yeah. That nigga is talented, bro. Like, it really wake your ass up and be saying some shit, bro. Some My nigga shit. is really raw. <laughs> so, Dash Radio, Dash the bitch, whoever <laughs> the fuck is listening right now, you understand me? L.O.E. G-I-N-O, stupid hoe. Go search that man up. He raw as fuck, and he not lacking motivation. You understand me? So, I think uh, that's 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 pretty much the kill F and B family. Raymond McMahon, Nefta Pharaoh, Coney, L O E, Gino, O and B, Peasy, and then you know we all got our own styles, personalities, different branches. Like Gino got the L O E shit. Coney got S S G. Yeah. Peasy got O and B. Yeah. You know. Um, it's 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 a dope family. Yeah. You know, it's a dope family. It's a very what's it called? What's the uh, it's a it's a dope ass gumbo pot. You understand yeah. me? We all our styles is all unique. And if niggas got all on the track together, we we beating shit yeah. up. <laughs> and put your money up. My team will come on. We run laps around niggas. But I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Like if. Niggas come with that publicity over here. Niggas give us that big break of how y'all be dick riding them other motherfuckers from wherever the fuck they from. Fair, we get that light over here. I'm telling you, boy. It's over. Stop playing with us, man. I already know. We mean business over here. Not playing with you. And we like raw and everything. Niggas will fuck around. Nigga get on this rap shit, whoop you. Nigga beat your ass in boxing. Um... Nigga swim laps around you. Yeah. Nigga, nigga, we got, nigga, we'll lift some motherfucking weights. <laughs> nigga, oh, we'll do hella shit. Niggas is real active over here and we not playing. Yeah. Nigga, we don't never tuck chains, none of that shit. We real respect it. Ain't no marks over here. We don't do no bitch ass snitch shit. You know, everybody over here is solid. So I think that's why, why motherfuckers fuck with us genuinely. I think like, when the world pay attention, they going to be stuck on us genuinely because we ain't with none of that bull. We ain't with none of that funny shit. We ain't with none of that fake-ass image shit, you know? Like, yeah. you could, the nigga come hang out with us for a week and be like, Mom, these niggas real. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> they never want to go home. Yeah. All time. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> nah, type, I fuck with that heavy. hype we on. Yeah, I fuck with that heavy, bro. Um, I want to ask you, can, we, can you tell me about a surreal moment you've had in your music career? Surreal moment I had in my music career is when I was doing, I think it was the Power 106. We was doing like a summer jam, and uh, I was backstage. And like my my manager like, Neff, come here. Somebody want to meet you. I'm like, all right, I'm smoking. So I walk in the room, and I, nigga, they had their back turned. I'm already stoked out. I walk in the room. Boom, big shine in the room. He had his back around. He had his back turned to me. He turns around, shake my hand. He's like, oh, what's up, Neff? I'm like, oh, fuck. This big shine. How yeah. the fuck he know who the fuck I am, yeah. right? <laughs> then I don't never know how to pronounce her name right. At the time when they was fucking with each other, Janae Ieko. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. She was like, she was there too. And she knew who I was. So she gave me a hug and said, what's up, right? Yeah. And the biggest moment of them all was like, the ceiling lights was like shining on this man, and he was at the smorgasbord table or whatever the fuck you call it, eating hors d'oeuvres and shit. And I'm like, man, who the fuck is this nigga just illuminated like this? Like, this nigga <laughs> shining right now, boy. And he turns around and it's fucking Kanye West, right? Yeah. So I lose it, man. I'm just smiling from ear to ear. I'm smiling so hard I could feel myself smiling. Yeah. And then this nigga Kanye is like, you can stop smiling. Like, yeah. and I just like stop smiling. And then, man, he like, he asked me to freestyle for him, right? Yeah. So I bust out on freestyling for Ye. And then he started nodding his head. Then he started doing like little ad libs for it. I'm like, man, it's so surreal. But then I'm like enjoying my moment so much. I did some nourishing and fucked it up. I didn't even know how he be tapped into his life. 
you know, you never know when nobody's going on in their own life. Yeah. I never knew him and Muhammad Ali was close friends like that and shit yeah. like that. So I'm on my Instagram. I'm like, oh, Muhammad Ali did? And that nigga said, what? I'm like, yeah, he died. He just died. He was like, oh, fuck. I was the first one to tell Kanye West That's Muhammad crazy. Ali died. And it's just like fucked up the whole mood. It just like, it was silent That's in the crazy. room. I'm like, God, <laughs> Neff, fucking dummy. And he was just like, everybody get out the room. I just need silence. And then I was walking down. He was like, oh, no, y'all don't have to leave. Just everybody else. And then he was just in silence. Then we prayed. Then we went out and did a dope-ass show. Yeah. Shit was tight. That's- that's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, uh, I want to ask you, what is a perfect day for Neff the Pharaoh? Perfect day for me is, man, waking up in the morning thanking Allah I'm still here, probably doing an interview, yeah, or something like this on the radio somewhere. Uh, fist to go get me something to eat. Shout out to We Jamming. Finna go get me some motherfucking oxtails. <laughs> that shit is fire. After the oxtails, I'm going to roll up me a good, big, back, black fronto. Because we don't fuck with backwoods no more. Backwoods, y'all fucking up, man. Yeah, if why y'all fuck with backwoods man, no more? backwoods is listening to it, I don't know what you weird-ass niggas did. I don't know if y'all got bought by Swisher. I think y'all did. For sure, I heard this shit. Niggas got bought by Swisher and start switching up the recipe and shit. It don't taste the same, and it's like... And bitches be stale, nigga. Throw away a whole pack. And bitches dry out so fast. So I'm on the fuck backwood movement. I'm sorry. Been on backwoods since the beginning. And now I just got to switch it up. I'm on fronto leaves. Them bitches is never stale. They just like a big ass backwood, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm putting you on free game. So after I roll up the fronto leaf for that high chew or that peasy purple or that gelati or that runts or that yeah. cereal milk. <laughs> um... We heading to the lab, man. We going to the studio. I didn't probably FaceTime my son, FaceTime my mama. Yeah. Let him know I love him. Um, We getting that studio vibe out. Being that bitch from like 3 in the afternoon to 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, just working. That's a perfect day for me. That's a good day for me. And then like like a super duper fun weekend is just show, 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 show every day. And then after party, after party, after party, wake up on Monday and you got to go to the studio and you in the studio all week. Yeah. Show, show, show. I love that shit, man. Yeah. Just flying to different cities and flying to different motherfucking countries and being able to explore. Like, I, I learned how to finesse the game with my talent. Like, what? You mean to tell me if I make some shit that sound raw with my voice, sell it, I could travel for free yeah. and enjoy myself? <laughs> Yeah. Bitch, I'm finna do it for real. I'm, finna, I'm not, not playing. Yeah, hell I'm, yeah. about to, I'm about to crack down on everything. Finesse, finesse, finesse. Do whatever the fuck you gotta do. Yeah. No, I'm tops. I wanna ask you, can you tell me what your favorite food spot is? My favorite food spot, man. I'm on Caribbean food right now. I've been fucking, I fuck with weed jamming, but they only got that shit in LA. Last night, I went to this dope-ass taco truck last night in L.A. too. It was called, like, what was it called? I've Leo's. Yeah, that's right around the corner. Leo's here. Tacos yeah. Truck. It yeah. is? Yeah. Man, we jamming might have to get. Oh, no. I, never mind. I want my oxtail, though. But uh, I love food, man. I just love going to see, going to different places and experience different food. Like, last night, I just said something in, in a rap. I said, I was like, I won't waste a hit on the, when I say, I won't waste a hit on the nerd, that's my newt. But bet I cracked the egg on her bird like Balut. Yeah. Like, niggas don't even know what Balut is. Like, what is that? You would have to Google it. Balut is like, I don't know if it's like an Asian or Filipino food. I don't know. Yeah. Um, But it's, it's a bird egg, right? Yeah. And it's a half-developed egg where you crack the egg upside down. When you crack it, you got to like, Slurped a little nasty juice out of it, paws, and it's a like baby bird embryo in there, oh, and you shit. eat it. It's called balut. Search That's it good. up, Google that shit. After this, after I leave, Google balut. I have never ate it. I never, but I've been around places where that was like their natural. What is it called? Like damn near a fucking a delicacy. Yeah, it was damn near a delicacy to them. Yeah, like it was damn near Afro aphrodisiac to motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not fucking with Balut. <laughs> Sorry. 
I like to look that. that shit up though. It's good. I'm gonna look that shit up for sure. I like to ask this question to everyone who comes on the show. If you could pick yourself to be any animal in the world, what would it be and why? Hmm. I'll be a dog. A dog? Any specific type? They got bitches. Real ones. Real yeah. bitches. <laughs> oh, they I'm like a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nigga, one of them dope ass, dope, expensive dogs. Two, not one of them little dumb ones. You know, a little dumb ass chihuahua. Yeah. The, the Mexican <laughs> partner be having and yeah. shaking all the time. Yeah. Nigga, little nigga named Jesus. Like, what's going on with you? That nigga <laughs> named Jesus. I remember I had a little bitch who had a dumb ass, retarded chihuahua named Ricky. That nigga got a whoop. My dog <laughs> jumped his stupid ass. <laughs> Fuck Ricky, nigga. Had that nigga I swallow and be like, man, that's, that's hella mean to dog. Nah, I love animals like a motherfucker. I love dogs. I got like over eight dogs. Really? Like, yeah, for real. I, uh, I bought a farm when I was 23, two acres in Vacaville. So me and my dad do this breeding shit where we breed English bulldogs, French bulldogs, bullies, and we just got a Rottweiler. So we think we're going to try to do the little Rottweiler lane too. So yeah. That's probably tight. be a dog, man. Probably that's tight. Be a dog. I don't know a dog's not that exotic. It's like, come on, that's regular. But man, I'm a regular ass nigga. And dogs got regular lives, but they let the fuck out their life, man. They yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, off times. Dogs. I ain't had a dog yet, but I've been wanting one for, for since I was a kid. I love me, man. I got puppies, man. I just had like six puppies. It's good. I love that's me good. for sure. It's good. I want to ask you, what is something that most people don't know about you? Uh, what's something people probably don't know about me? Yeah. Uh, I'm terrified of rodents. Really? Bruh. Like if you see a rat, you're going to freak. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the hardest nigga on earth, no matter what's going down, nigga. Police, shootouts, nigga, nigga, robberies, nigga, car crashes, nigga, get his head blown off, and I'ma stay calm. I'ma, boy, we gotta get him to the hospital. Yeah. Let a rat come in this motherfucker. You gonna be like, what this nigga <laughs> never <a> bitch? <laughs> and that nigga all on top of the table and shit. <laughs> I am not fucking with rats. And these motherfuckers look so creepy to me, bruh. Yeah, That's so dirty, bro. Like, how you got a pet rat? How you even think that shit is attractive? Like, I'm talking about rats, raccoons, nigga. Nigga, whoever thought a kangaroo was okay, that's not okay. I ever look at a kangaroo? It's a big-ass rat, bro. Basically. <laughs> kangaroos is nasty as a motherfucker, bro. Kangaroos, like, possums, all that little weird-ass shit. Rabbits. Yeah. I damn near don't fuck with rabbits, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't want a pet a rabbit either. Bruh, them, I don't, bro, rodents are... And then I went, and then like another reason why you just when I hear a nigga rodent, I just associate a rodent with lowest dirty fucking scum of a snitch. Yeah. Fucking snitch bitch. Yeah. <laughs> rodent. Like I fuck, yeah. I don't fuck with that. I don't, yeah. uh, uh, we don't even times. like those, bro. Can't I bought a pet no snake. I had bought a pet snake just to feed him mice and rats just so I could see him nigga get X'd out. That's yeah. how much I do not fuck with no rat. Rodent, snitch, bitch, none of that. Mm -mm, nope. Hell no. Nah. We we for sure not fucking with no snitches over here. Mm. I want to ask you, you've been making music for a long time. What do you think has changed the most in your music over the years? I think I've obtained a lot more knowledge than I started with. You know, I'm able to rap about, like, things that I actually have and things that I actually go through versus when I was a teenager. Teenager, I... I, I would say I stretched the truth a little bit. I think every every rapper uh, or, or stretched the truth a little bit. Like, oh, I got this or I got that many guns. I probably said I had like 30 guns. I only probably had one pea shooter on me yeah. at the time, you know? Shit like that. But uh, you learn to, to, to take your experiences and life and get whatever game or knowledge you can get out that motherfucker. And I could spit it right back to you on a track. Yeah. You know, um, it could be catchy. It could be like, 
knowledgeable. It could be I can hit you with some dumb, ignorant shit that's gonna make you wanna dance, you know? Yeah. I feel like that's what's what's getting better with me as an artist. I'm learning to perfect my craft. I'm not all the way perfect. I'm raw though. I'm getting yeah. raw as fuck at this shit. So Mira. I learned to to like go travel. Like I I'm a nigga that man, we at the house. I just got a house in Atlanta too. So yeah. Nigga, we in California. I'm like, nigga, ain't nothing to do out here. Let's go to Atlanta. Atlanta you know, be lit, though. Just to fly out there and just, nigga, you could rap about a flight. Yeah. Like, you know, just different shit to give you stuff to rap about. Because motherfuckers be lying. Yeah. This nigga, this man right here, Coney next to me, that's none. He's a one rapper. Like, it really get pissed off for niggas who lie in their raps. He really do not like that shit. He don't like niggas who fabricate in their raps. He don't listen to it. Won't fuck with you as a human being, you know, and I feel like our 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 lane and our 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 body of work or, or our job is allowing us to travel and and experience things and be able to get to do things, so we don't have to lie. Yeah, you don't have to lie if you be if you be yourself or you remain a nigga that that's really you, you truly genuine to you 100%. You don't worry about what no motherfucker think. Bruh, people going to gravitate to you. Of like course. Straight up, you going to get love no matter what. Like, no, I'm period. Tough. I want to ask you, you're probably the most successful solo artist from Vallejo since Mac Dre. Um, do you ever feel that's pressure facts. to continue? That's fucking facts. Do you ever feel pressure to continue to be that example from your city? Man, hey, man, say, man, I don't be cocky like this, but it's 2019, and like I said, I don't give a fuck. I'm the closest thing you're going to get to Mac Dre, man. Okay. It's, it's going to be a lot of motherfuckers that's going to come and try to do it. They're going to try. They might have, might have his sound, might have his whatever. I ain't even from the same side as that, man. I'm the closest thing you're going to get to that, man. I'm the rawest thing after that, man. You understand me? I'm the rawest thing after 40. Can't nobody from Valil. That's rapping. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to whoever ever feel like this. None of you niggas is fucking with me. Yeah. I'm y'all niggas' dads, for sure. <laughs> All time. On my mama, on my baby. Like, niggas ain't fucking with me. I done did shit niggas ain't never did. I still, I run laps around these niggas. Niggas want to talk about money, I'll buy one of you little niggas. If y'all want to go to four, if y'all niggas want to go to war, nigga, come on, my nigga. I have, well, I buy you, I buy your partner, have your partner turn on you type shit. You know, like. And I ain't never tooted my horn when it come to that Vallejo shit. But when it come to this V shit, I am Vallejo. I don't give a fuck what nobody talking about. When it come to the Bay, I'm nigga, I'm the Bay, nigga. Of course. What nobody doing, nigga, before Nefta Pharaoh, before Big Time, who? Who? Shit. Nigga, it was me, nigga. <laughs> it was <Neff>. Me, nigga. <laughs> On my mama, I opened up doors for all these niggas. I don't give a fuck what nobody. If a nigga don't even want to tap his, take his hat off and tip it off to me, I don't give a fuck. You steal my son, bitch. I ain't yeah. signed a, I just ain't signed a birth, birth certificate. You know, you steal my son, just a little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> even if you don't know it. Nigga, you my son. On my mama, nigga. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to that Vallejo shit, I got to start to my horn more. I'm Vallejo, period. Yeah. I'm the rawest nigga out of Vallejo, period. Yeah. Straight the up. The rawest nigga, man. Yeah. No, the not... rawest nigga. I yeah. don't give a fuck. I love Mac Dre. I love E-40. You know what I'm saying? They say you never post the outside the master, but when it comes to this artistry and it comes to this game and this craft, if we was all to go like, as a race, nigga, I'm gonna beat them niggas. What do you think I'm what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. What do you think? I'm every rapper is supposed to feel like he the best. You supposed to feel like you the best, but I know I'm the best. Yeah. You know? So you could feel like that over there. I know. Yeah. I know. At least from the city where I'm from, nigga, I'm the best nigga out there, period. Yeah. No, I'm tops, bro. Dre if Dre was still alive, he'd give me a run for my money. You know, 40 got 40 got his blappers. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with 40, <laughs> but come on, man. Nah, of course. Left to Pharaoh. Niggas is not fucking with me, bro. No, nah, off tops. I want to ask you, what is the biggest lesson you've learned in this industry? Niggas is not your friends. Like that number one friendly shit. Like I was saying, I touched bases on that. Niggas is not your friends. You was not my partner. You was not my buddy. Niggas will be buddy, buddy, partner, partner, brother, brother. All while you got a buzz or all while they want something out of you. But soon as nigga 
the album drop and it's over with, you don't even hear from these people no more. You don't even see these motherfuckers or you don't even hear from certain motherfuckers until an album about to drop. Yeah. Like, bitch ass nigga, you don't talk to me yeah. for like during this year. Oh, yo, Neff, when the, uh, the album about to drop, we got to do this. We got to do. Come on, stop playing with me, yeah. nigga. You not my partner. Nigga, Ken and them. Yeah. You know, the niggas I be with on daily, but them is my niggas. These other niggas, I learning how to work with them, you know? Like yeah. I said, it's just co-workers. Yeah. You know, it's no love. It's no, I know you don't love me, you know? I don't care. You know, I'm not no bitch. I got, I got 13 siblings, and I got day one niggas. So you just keep your shit over there. You, nigga, this my co-worker. Yeah. When that album come out, when it's about to come out, we get together and we do whatever the fuck we need to do. Nigga, you gone about your day. You know what I'm saying? But as I think our motherfuckers got to learn how to work in harmony and not want to mix business with pleasure. Like, yeah. niggas get to want to mix in business with pleasure, and that's when you start getting disappointed. Yeah. You start getting your little feelings hurt. Like, nigga, you can have... This show A&R, this show publicist, nigga. This show, that ain't your partner. Yeah. Nigga, you getting hella comfortable and shit. Bitch, when that radio run over or when that album run over... She got to go deal with the next artist. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not really nice. Niggas, stop it's falling for it. You, that's their job to make you feel like that Yeah. when you with them. But don't fall for it. You going to be a bitch-ass hurt little boy crying. Yeah. On my mama. I think it's, it's big for you uh, when you say that for me because I think for me with when I started doing like the interviews and shit, I, I was like, man... It's, it's weird for me because I was working, I was interning at Power Run of Six. So I'm seeing them bring all these artists through, but it's not personal. They don't really fuck with the artists. So when I got the opportunity to start interviewing artists, I'm like, the biggest difference between me and then like other niggas that do interviews and shit, most of the niggas I interview, I actually fuck with. You feel me? Genuinely. Yeah. So well, I, I think. I see you. We yeah. read and yeah. each other. We above heads of the streets numerous times. Like a lot of, once again, sorry to cut you off. A lot of you bitch ass niggas don't even be outside, bro. I don't, yeah. ever, I don't never see you niggas outside. I done ran into this man. You know what I'm saying? State to state. I done ran into other niggas. Shout out to the other niggas that be really outside moving with this shit. State to state. And I ain't talking about none of these Hollywood ass niggas that go outside, make a post, and go your ass right back inside. I'm talking about... <laughs> Them shooter gang conies. I'm talking about them LOE Genos. I'm talking about them Nefta Pharaohs. Them niggas is outside, bruh. Yeah. Them niggas is outside, bruh. You know that nigga Slimmy B from SOB? Yeah. Yeah, that nigga outside too. I fuck with him. Yeah. He does be outside <laughs> on everything. I always bump into that nigga. That's my nigga. All times, bro. For my final question before you get out of here, I want to ask you what advice can you give to a younger artist who's trying to get into the music game? Bro, believe in yourself. Fuck everybody else. Go hard for you because they're not going to want to do it. Like I said, these motherfuckers is going to give you, they're going to paint you a picture. And then when you take the wrapping off, the paint going to peel off. You understand me? Yeah. Like, it's a mirage. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're not going hard for you, who the fuck else is? You know, like, if you don't invest all your time into you, nobody's going to want to invest no time into you. You just got to make yourself a hot commodity. You got to make yourself... Big business, you gotta be sellable, but you don't be a fucking sellout, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, uh be an opener, man. Sweat your city, man. We and them big motherfucking artists like Nefta Pharaohs and uh, Travis Scott's or whoever the fuck you like come to your city. Sweat, sweat the promoters. Like, man, hey, how can I open up for these niggas, man? Yeah. Nigga, this my city, man. How I open up for these niggas, man. You know. Make yourself be seen at them after parties. You might have to ball out and buy a table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you might have to. You know what I'm saying? You got to just make that image. You got to make yourself be heard because you don't make yourself heard or make yourself be seen. It's not like somebody's going to come through and say, hey, I think I found a Coca-Cola. Somebody want this shit? Yeah. Like, come on. They're going to pick it up and open it and or pour it out a little bit or try to mix it or see what it is and, yeah. or see if they can make a... What if they don't even like that and smell it and try to go make something else? Yeah. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like so you just... You just got to be 100% true to you. Like I said, you just got to be tunnel vision. Like, man, fuck what this nigga's saying. Like, it might be good. And you got to be a nigga that, that's um, open to constructive criticism. Yeah. There's a lot of rappers... You know, when I was younger, I used to be like, shut the fuck up, bitch. I know how to rap. You ain't going to tell me. Yeah. Like, how you going to tell me? I rap. 
Like, I've been doing this shit since I was four, but it ain't even that. It's like it's not, they're not a real, somebody who really can give you constructive criticism. I don't think they want to change you or tell you how to rap. It's more or less than how to perfect your craft or when to time things or how to put emphasis or words on words or how to change your voice or switch up flows and melodies. I practice on, oh, bro, bro, I practice on that shit like, like a football player, like a fucking quarterback yeah. practice on throwing a ball. Like, bro, I really, really practice. I practice my stage performance. I practice my breathing on songs. I practice my my motherfucking, my jingles, how catchy my shit is. I, I practice on, like, me really talking about some real shit. It's just practice, 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 and it eventually makes perfect, bruh. Yeah. So that's all I could say to an up-and-coming artist is practice till you pop. Yeah. Practice till you pop, man. All tops. Shit, once again, Neff, I appreciate you coming through today. I think this is going to be a dope conversation for people to hear, for sure. Appreciate you, too. I'm pretty loaded, too. Y'all know you see me in the vaping. I already know. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, say that. Look out for the Mushrooms and Coloring Books album. Ginobili got some on the way. LOE Gino got some on the way. Um, Raymond McMahon, we all got projects. Teflon Twine, that nigga don't even rap. He didn't drop two albums on you bitch ass niggas and start getting iTunes checks. He the DJ Khaled of the Bay. That's what I'm saying. Man, that nigga go so crazy. That's my best friend. I've been my nigga since preschool. I ain't never had a Shout fight out with Teflon that nigga. We, we get on some niggas. We didn't had disagreements and arguments where I, man, shut your fat ass up. Boy, I slap your little skinny ass. And then we just be, I'm, shut up talking to me. Nigga, you shut up talking to me. Then roll a blunt and then just be like that. But, you know, that's my nigga, man. 20 yeah. plus years, I've known that man, like, all my life for real. Yeah. That's my nigga. That's real And shit. my cousin right here behind me, boy, he don't know how much I love him so much. That's like my big brother. Like, yeah. niggas try to follow behind him. Like, yeah. anything Pookie was doing, I'm trying to do. Like, <laughs> Nigga, so that's just the type of person I am. I'm very family. I'm a, fam I'm a family man. You know, like I said, I love my day ones. I cherish the ones that surround me. That Without them, it wouldn't be no Nefta Fero. So yeah. if I wasn't around the people I'm around every day or if I didn't do all the little fucked up shit I done did in life, if I go back to try to change and, and switch anything, I wouldn't be this man who I am today. No matter how hard it was, if I had to go back and do it again, like like they say, you got to. I wouldn't change nothing. I would go through all the pain, heartache, all the good times, all the wins, all the losses, because it made me who I am today. Hell yeah. Like, period. That's real shit, bro. Man, bro. <laughs> Dope interview, bro. I appreciate you sliding. It's all good. I'm finna go get some weed jamming right now. Oxtails. Off tops. <laughs> say that.